These are the most underplayed yet most fun nations in the game. The name of the game and the game is EU4, okay? Just putting it out there in case you're not sure what's happening here. I am, of course, talking about Avaria. Why Why not Circassia, my beloved Circassia? Don't get me wrong, Circassia is amazing as well. I love Circassia. I play Circassia all the time. I haven't played Circassia in a while, to be honest. But Avaria is a special nation. Not only is Avaria one of the hardest achievements you can get, the Avar Kaganat, where you have to take all of the Hungarian lands as Avaria, but you start as a vassal of a two province miner. You're a one province miner that's a vassal of a two province miner. Do you see the problem there? <laughs> There's a little bit of a problem there. The war is easy. Usually, Kazikomuns does not get any strong allies. But after you get uh, your independence, it's going to be hard because you're going to be wedged between the Great Horde, Persia, or Akoyunlu, and then later on the Ottomans. And you might really get crushed very easily. But if you do succeed, you get one of the hardest and most rare achievements in the game. Plus, look at this awesome map color. And most importantly, look how cool and awesome the flag is. It has a wolf on it. Literally has a wolf on it. You cannot get more Sigma than having a wolf on your flag. Awoo! Since we are in the vicinity of Avaria, also on this list is of course Theodoro, another one province miner. Very difficult start unless you just raffle stomp the Crimeans, which is doable, and then you just expand like crazy. There's two strats once you do your war against the Crimeans and you got these lands. You can either build up your power strength here and then you march your way through Poland into HRE and you get the achievement, the Gothic Invasion, where you have to have all of the Germanic provinces as your provinces. Or you know CB into Ireland or you know CB into East Frisia, vassalize them, lose your province here, and then you get an adjacent province next to your vassal before you lose your main province. So you change your capital to this new added, newly conquered province that you cannot core until you lose the province in this land. So that's strategy number two. There's actually a third secret strategy. The third secret strategy is to snake all the way into Tibet, and then you form Tibet, you become a horde, and then you become the Theodoro version of the horde and you just kill everybody that's the easy way the hard part of that is just getting the tibetan lands truly one of the least played nations in the game but one nation that deserves a lot more respect because it's in the mafia so it needs some respect aside from the fact that it's in the mafia this nation is gujarat and why do i say that it's a great nation it's the only nation that starts with the zoroastrian province in india there's two zoroastrian provinces in the world one in the province of daman that gujarat has and another one in the timurid lands in the province of yazd so you can actually go zoroastrian as gujarat and by going zoroastrian you can take full advantage of the monument that exists in shirvan that offers you fire damage reduction fire damage inflicted and discipline plus 10 percent plus can do a lot of other shenanigans it's a unique nation and best part is that it has a really cool mission tree that revolves around both playing toll in a way becoming a massive merchant republic and also conquering the african coastline you literally get claims on all of mutaba Kilra, and all of these lands claims on uh, wow. the yemen Hello, area wow. and sir hindi and so on Next up, obviously, is going to be Tidor. Honestly, I can say both Ternat and Tidor is the same nation. They have the same ideas. They have the same mission tree. And they're the only two provinces in the world that actually have the uh, cloves trade good which is the most valuable trade good in the game it, it costs a base of eight ducats from the start eight ducats that is massive and the production bonus for this trade efficiency if i'm not mistaken plus you get local trade power plus 20 percent and you can only have cloves in these five provinces or so what is it one two three four five six six provinces that's it six provinces in the entire world that can have this trade good is just insane it's very easy to get the goods produced leadership by getting the two provinces at the start. And you can use your mission tree to basically colonize these areas really fast. Then you can expand into Australia, you can expand into the north, go into the new world. You can even become totemist if you want to do some shenanigans from the new world, because you're an animist nation from the beginning, so it's easy to go totemist if you want it. Definitely a unique playthrough. Not many people have played as these two nations. It takes a little bit of skill, but it's a super fun campaign. I actually also like Tidor because it starts with a 3-3-3 leader. The other one's a 4-4-3. So it's a little bit easier, but mainly I like Tidor because of the color. <laughs>
Hey man, I pa I paint the map with the color. The color has to be nice, okay? Oh, Zanzibar! I forgot about Zanzibar. True, true, true. Yes, yes, I forgot you can also get it in Zanzibar. You're right. Good job, chat. The fact that you know this shows me that you're all complete and utter. Can someone tell me the name of this country? Ah, la, 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 la. Praetorians, that's the word I was looking for. Praetorians is the word. <laughs> Next up is, of course, the homie. If you want to be a real homie, you got to get the special achievement as the homie, where you got to own all of these lands in Central Africa. And by Central Africa, I really mean West Africa. <laughs> and you got to make them fetishists, because everybody knows homies are real fetishists. They're not anything else except fetishists, okay? Just saying, just saying. Not only that, but the homie has some pretty interesting ideas. Advisor cost at the start should help out a little bit. You also got some discipline, national manpower and even institution spread and prestige yeah they're pretty fucking trash ideas i'm not gonna sugarcoat this they suck and you need to change your country after you get the achievement but the color is amazing and dude they have an elephant we have an elephant on the flag who else can have ayutthaya also has an elephant don't think about it too much okay oh yes this elephant has a crown look look it's got a crown so there really are be kingies What's a kingy? It's the king of the elephants. That's what I'm trying to say here. I prefer having an elephant in my pants than in the flag. Damn. You son of a bitch. Not you, the country of you. The only reason this country's on this list is because it's only one letter. It's you. But that being said, you can form Tibet with these guys. You use this mission tree and you can form the nation. You can form Dzungar as you and as Tsang. Both of these nations can form Dzungar. You do that by allying, I think, Mongolia or Oirats. But before you do so, remember that it's not about you. It's about the friends we made along the way. That's all I have to say. And the prize money goes to the nation of Rasids, a nation that starts with 5,000 units and 6,000 rebels. <laughs> if you look at the ratio, you will notice there's more rebels in your country than there's actual soldiers. <laughs> but there's a good side to this, okay? There's a good side. The good side is the fact that you have some of the best national ideas in the game, and I really kid you not. Look at this. You got national manpower, infantry combat ability, defense for forts, shock damage received, minus 15, morale of armies, good produced, trade power, leader shock, and trade efficiency, plus your Shia. You also get the minus 10 shock damage received from the Zaidi school, and you can get another plus 10 shock damage inflicted from the Jafari school, so that's essentially minus minus 25% shock damage received, which is insane. Rasids is super fun. It's gonna be a challenging start and you're gonna have to rush expanding into the Arabian part so you can face the Mamluks afterwards. And you can also expand into Africa for the gold mines if you want. And I recommend that you do obviously. But yeah, it's not easy. It is super fun. You got great ideas. And if you do choose to form Yemen, remember that you should keep your Rasid ideas, which are way better than the Yemeni ideas. Next up is, of course, the Pirate Republic of Arugan, a nation that you can start as by actually starting as Volgas, releasing yourself in the province of Arugan. You don't start as a pirate nation, but it will lead down to you becoming a pirate nation. Don't worry about it. And you can also form Prussia. So that means you can form Pirate Prussia if you're really into that kind of thing. Albeit, don't get excited. There's not like a Pirate Prussia government or anything of the sort. You're going to likely be a Republican pirate country essentially so republican prussia there you go lovely color on the map as well and uh most importantly really cool flag that is essentially the volgast flag with the crown because they're kings and schnitzels okay just saying just saying the best part though about volgast is really the fact that you are the only pirate nation in the baltic so you can get a ton of money from raiding the coastlines here you can even go and raid all the way into the english channel and if you raid into the english channel you likely will get in the mid game like three to 400 ducats from just raiding the coast of Holland, not even including the rest of them. Obviously, nothing is says interesting as well as uh, Ryukyu, the nation in the middle of nowhere that is a tributary of Ming, but is actually a Japanese nation and has one of the hardest achievements, the Three Mountain Achievement, where you have to actually conquer the world as this nation here. It's not as hard as it sounds. There's two tactics. Tactic number one is you become the daimyo, sorry, you become the shogun of the uh, Japanese islands. That essentially speaks 
speaks for itself. Tactic number two, you go through the northern parts here and then you uh, make your way into the new world. You get the Nahuatl religion and then you reform and you reform off of the Manchurian tribes, which are hordes, and you get their government type, which is a horde government type, and then you just kill everybody as a horde. Also, you can become a horde by going via the uh, Tibetan mission tree that I keep mentioning because it's just super overpowered and anyone can go for it. So essentially, you can start at Naples and then you go into Tibet and then you form a horde as Naples and you're a horde as Naples. <laughs> That's how overpowered that mission tree is. So there's a lot of options of doing the World Conquest. It's not that hard. The hard part about a World Conquest is not getting bored once you're super powerful. That's the thing that puts a lot of people off, in my opinion. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. And don't stare in the sun with the naked eye. Because you're going to die. That's what happens. Don't try it.